Shalom and Chag Sameach, everyone. I'm Rabbi Cecilia Beyer from Temple Beth Am Yisrael in Springfield, and I'm here to share some Passover Torah with you. Every Passover, we are asked to see things as if we ourselves left Egypt. Our Haggadah asks us to make ourselves part of the story, imagining that we are part of the Erev Rav, the mixed multitude who left Egypt together. There were so many different people in that mixed group that fled Egypt and crossed through the Sea of Reeds together, each with their own take on the signs and wonders and miracles they encountered. So it's fun to imagine how we might have reacted to the experience. How would you or I have responded when we were asked to make sure our sandals were on our feet, our staves were at the ready, and asked to grab the bread before it even had time to finish cooking? What would it have been like? What might it have been like for you or for me to watch the sea part and to walk on dry land? How did it feel to hear the thunderous hooves and the chariots of Pharaoh's army behind us the whole time? What did it feel like to witness the miraculous? As we imagine ourselves in this particular beautiful moment in our national and traditional history, we often hear the saying, seeing is believing. But sometimes, maybe it's the other way around. In order to see, we must first be willing to believe. As we imagine ourselves among that mixed group that fled Egypt together on that night of the first Passover, I want to tell you the story of two different fellow Red Sea pedestrians who also left Egypt that night. First is the story of two guys, Shlomi and Yankel. So Shlomi and Yankel were two average Israelites who heard about this exodus, heard about all of the kerfuffle, grabbed their sandals, grabbed their staff, grabbed their matzah, and joined the group, schlumping along towards the back of the group. And they're going along, and you can imagine they hear the hooves and the chariots behind them. But since they're not in the front of the line, they don't see Moses. They don't see what's going on at the very front. They don't actually see when the sea parts. And they're trudging along and they're trudging along and they get to the middle and they're trudging and all of a sudden they notice it's getting muddier and their feet are sticking in the mud. But they have no idea that they're walking on what used to be the sea. They've gone from dry land into the mucky waters without realizing that a miracle has occurred around them. And so Shlomi turns to Yonkel and says, Oi, are we there yet? How much longer are we going to keep walking? And all they keep doing is looking down at the mud. And Yonkel says to Shlomi, my feet are getting muddy. And Yonkel and Shlomi start fetching about the experience they're having, not realizing that all around them, if they'd only look up, the sea had parted. There were walls of water to either side of them, and a miracle was going on right around them. But because they didn't see, they couldn't believe. Now, in contrast to our friend Shlomi and Yankel, who understandably have their feet in the mud and are not looking around, on the other hand is my favorite Midrash, the story of Miriam. Now Miriam is up at the front with her brother Moses, and Miriam has a timbrel with her. Now imagine, of all things, we didn't have enough time to wait for bread to rise to make sandwiches for the trip. Yet Miriam and the women had timbrels, had musical instruments with them as they crossed the Red Sea. Why on earth did she have a timbrel? In Mechilta de Rabbi Yishmael, our ancient sages praised Miriam's great trust in God and her belief, which are reflected in the very fact that she had a timbrel in her hand. They ask, where did the Israelites get timbrels for dancing in the wilderness? And the answer to that question is that the righteous one, Miriam, knew that the Holy One would perform miracles and mighty acts once again when they went forth from Egypt. And so Miriam had the foresight to pack ahead of time and bring her timbrels. In other words, Miriam, unlike Shlomi and Yankel, she believed and there was able to see. She had hope. She believed there would be a miracle, and indeed there was. In the darkest, narrowest of times, 
and the narrowest of places, Mitzrayim, Miriam remembered to pack her matzah, to put her sandals on her feet, but also to pack her hope. She knew that there would again be an opportunity to praise God and sing and dance once more. So the choice is ours. Do we look down at the mud at our feet or do we look around knowing that we will see miracles? And do we plan ahead, hoping and knowing that the miracles will be there? I know I have my timbrel. Chag Sameach. <laughs>